Great, thank you so much, Chad. And hello and welcome to everyone. Um, we are going to be walking through some uh, basic information about uh, metal doors. Uh, as you see there, some of the learning objectives will be the sizing, terminology, uh, applications and benefits of steel doors. Uh, for you that may or may not know, these are um, our metal door companies that we have available. Seco and Curry's you're probably more familiar with. Um, and they make, you know, from standard metal doors to custom doors. Fleming out of Canada is primarily a, um, a galvanized product, unprimed. Uh, Pioneer is on the East Coast in Carlstadt, I believe, New Jersey. Um, they also make a combination of standard and custom uh, doors. Concept, also on the East Coast, they are predominantly more custom manufacturer. And then the newest acquired uh, company in Northern California is Styles, uh, Still Doors Window Systems. Again, more geared towards custom. So today's session will be just going through some of the basic information about uh, doors. I will also, at the bottom of your screen, as we walk through this, you'll see the Curry's and Seco um, uh, nomenclature um, for those different types of doors. So hopefully that will also help. Um, starting off with our metal doors, again, you'll see here that we have them defined by your width, your height, thickness. Um, most of our industry now is inch and three quarter thick, uh, but um, we can offer an inch and three eighths. Uh, metal door, um, but that is going to be a longer lead time. That is something that we don't inventory. Our service centers do not inventory. Uh, we'll also be talking about different core types, the edges, and the gauges of our doors. And one thing I do want to point out is on your width and height, it is always um, nominal size, so it's feet and inches. Um, please, when you're looking at sizes of your doors, uh, if you need a 36 inch wide door, it should be listed as three three zero. Uh, if you list out 36, you would get a three foot six inch wide door because the factories will always go nominal. So they're looking at feet and inches, feet and inches. So please keep that in mind. We'll start off with some of our standard door faces. These are what are typical in the industry. Um, each manufacturer can make a variation of these types of door faces, but this is just giving you an idea of the standard items. So, for, of course, flush means there's no visible seam on the face of the door. Then you get into your vision light, which industry standard is 10 by 10. Um, that is visible glass size. And as we look at the various types of uh, doors with the glass in them, please be aware that as you list out these sizes, you want to be specific if you're giving the factory or whoever you're ordering this from the either exposed glass or visible glass size, or if you only want um, the factory to do a cutout. Example is if you're ordering a five by 20, you in our industry, the five by 20 mean that is visible glass size. If you actually want us to do a cutout of just a five by 20, you'll need to say it's cutout only. If not, if you list five by 20, you're going to get the cutout and the factory will install a glass light kit. You have your half glass. The so one thing you wanna be aware of with your half glass sizes is the height of your door. You really want that glass to be able to come down far enough. Say you're ordering a nine foot or 10 foot tall door, that half glass needs to come down enough so that a average height person can come up to the door and look through that. Your Dutch doors, Again, you all have seen these types of doors in, um, in commercial applications, whether it's your post office, nurseries, pharmacies. Uh, this door can be offered with or without a shelf. It can be fire rated up to 90 minutes. Your full louver and full glass basically means almost all of the doors cut out for either a louver or a glass. Um, with the full glass also there, when that's coming from the factory, you cannot get a full glass cutout only. It has to have some sort of reinforcement in there or a light kit. And the reason is basically, as you see that detail, almost all of the core of the door is cut out. You put those doors on a um, pallet and put them in a truck and it bounces along the highway. By the time it gets to final destination, you won't, believe me, you will not have much core left. So again, the factory will not ship those doors out with just cut out only. Uh, louvered doors, 
Um, when it comes to fire rated doors that, are, that have louvers in them, you have to have a fusible link louver. Basically that type of louver is there's a little link in the louver when it, um, uh, when it gets heated up to a certain temperature, the link will disintegrate, allows the slats to close. And if it's a fire rated door, the louver can only be in the bottom half of the door. Now, if that door is um, non-rated, if you can put five louvers in a door, go right ahead. Um, but you have some stipulations when it's a fire rated um, door. So just be aware that it needs to be in the bottom half of the door. So with some door terminologies we'll see here, and I won't walk through all of these, but I wanna point out some of the highlights, some things that you do want to be aware of. The first is your top rail. Um, on hollow metal doors, when it comes to sequin curries, they have a variation of the dimension from the top of the door down to like the, the light cut out. But if you keep in mind six inches of clear space that you need, that will clear your closer reinforcement that is inside that door. So if you have a customer that has this detail with this glass in it, and they show you a detail that it's top down to the top of that cutout or light kit is say three inches, you're going to have an issue because there will be, um, uh, you won't have enough room for closure reinforcement in there. So be aware of that. Your bottom rail, obviously, if you have some sort of glass or louver in that, and your customer wants it eight inches from the bottom, but they are asking for 10 inch high kick plates, that's going to be another conflict. You also want to be aware of your, um, on the um, hinge and your lock side of the door. Um, your center rail is very important. If you had, say, two half glass in that door and you have some uh, type of hardware, whether it's a mortise lock or even an exit device, you need to make sure you've got enough dimension in between those cutouts in order to mount that either exit device or in the edge of the door to make sure that the lock prep, that you have enough room to accommodate either that mortise lock box or some sort of other, other type of hardware. Um, when you talk about full flush door, that is referring to the face of the door. And again, as I said on the previous slide, if the, um, the door cannot have any visible seams or marks or anything like that, um, or panels on the face of the door, and it, that makes it a full flush. Uh, if it's seamless, or if you have the terminology of seamless, then it's referring to the edge of the door, which means that there's no visible seam on the face of the door. So you won't be able to see how that door is attached. The way we um, accommodate a, or make a door seamless is we put the skins together. We'll either continuous weld or spot weld, um, depending on what you as a customer are asking for. And then we dress the edge with basically Bondo and grind it down and then prime paint it. So again, that is something that is an additional charge. Um, you want to be aware of seamless though. I mean, it has a great um, benefit because it has a really nice look to it. You don't see a visible seam, but if it's used in a really highly um, used uh, uh, application or taken a lot of abuse, the one thing you may have is your customer calling you and saying, hey, the, 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 you know, I can see the exposed edge of the door now, and you may have some cracks in that edge. But for the most part, the seamless is for aesthetics, does not do anything to the strength of that door, doesn't take anything away from the door. It's just an aesthetics that the architect is looking at, looking or going for. So we'll walk through the various types of cores. All of the cores that I'm going to show you can be fire rated. There are some that are um, different applications you want to be aware of. And the first one is the cardboard um, paper core, which we call the honeycomb core. This can be fire rated up to three hour. Um, with this, you have some of the, um, with a lesser cost possibly, um, different types of installation um, with this door. Um, but with a honeycomb core door, Remember, it is a paper core. Most manufacturers have a resin type of core now where it will hold up to some types of moisture. You can cap off the top of your door, but a lot of times you will see this type of core in interior applications. Next type of core we have out there is your mineral fiberboard core. Sometimes you will hear it also um, referred to as a temperaturized, 250 temperized door. This door most of the time is used in, or you'll see it specified in ex, um, stairwell applications. So with a mineral fiberboard or temperaturized door, basically the testing that we had to do or in our industry, uh, 
first 30 minutes of fire exposure to one side of the door, the other side of the door will not exceed 250 degrees. That first 30 minutes is the most critical to get people out of that building and down the stairwells and out to safety. So with that, we have a different type of core. You do not want to miss this on a spec because it is quite expensive, but you will see that in stairwell applications and, and a lot of combustible uh, chemical um, types of applications anywhere where there might be some combustible materials, um, you will see the mineral fiber board or temperaturized door specified. The next type of door we have is the still stiffened door. This is probably the, um, the type of, well, this is the type of door that you're going to use for durability. It is not designed around aesthetics. And the reason is, as you look at that detail, we have 22 gauge metal stiffeners. They're hat shaped and they're welded to the inside face of the door. They're placed about six inches apart. And then between those stiffeners, we pack it full of insula insulation. So it is a very robust door. It is definitely a type of door where you're using it, um, back doors of um, uh, commercial uh, types of projects where you have a dock and then you have your man door and they're bringing their goods and everything in that door. You want something that's going to withstand that. So the still stiffened door is your type of door. The downside to it is because we are welding metal to metal, you will see spot wall marks on the face of that door. As our industry has developed more and more different types of ways to attach those stiffeners to the inside skins, they still haven't been able to totally eliminate any spot wall marks on the face of the door. So therefore, you do not want to use this door um, in an aesthetically pleasing application or, you, or any kind of high gloss finish paint. You do not want to um, use this type of door. But if you have an application where they're going to a lot of abuse, it's a great door. One last thing with still stiffen, uh, the stiffeners in our industry standard NAM spec says those stiffeners are 22 gauge metal stiffeners. Um, both Seco and Curry's can offer you a variety of different gauges or thickness of the stiffeners. So if you get into a really high security or very abusive opening, you may see those stiffeners be increased to 20 gauge or 18 gauge. The next type of core we have is a polystyrene core. This is an insulated core. Um, this is probably the bed, bread and butter type of core that you see most likely in a lot of distributors facility in our service centers. The great thing with it, it is an insulated door. So as you're talking to your customer, you don't have to worry about is it interior exterior application, you have an insulated door. The other type of insulated door we have is a polyurethane foamed in core. You'll see the styrene, depending on the manufacturer, they may have it as a what we call a one-piece drop-in core, but the polyurethane core is a foamed-in core with both of our factories. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that core later on with different types of doors. But the one thing with the urethane and the styrene, both are insulated. The polyurethane um, foamed-in door has a higher insulating value. So if you were looking at, say, a cold storage area, uh, we have customers out of Anchorage, um, Fairbanks that use nothing but the polyurethane core door because they need the highest insulated type of door that we have, and that's going to be the urethane. The other type of core that we have is what we call a trio door, a trio core. I'll get a little bit more into this in a little bit, but basically what it is, you'll see the detail there. We take those stiffeners, and unlike the still stiffened door above it, we take those stiffeners and we weld it to a subsheet or another piece of um, steel. It's placed inside the door, and then we either pack it full of insulation in between the voids, or we pump it full of urethane, and we'll go through the difference with those two and the two applications for those. Um, with STC or acoustical doors, again, these are types of doors that um, you're trying to reduce the transmission of sound passing through that door. But along with the door having an STC, rating on it, you also need to make sure what that wall is. It has to have an STC rating. Um, I have seen um, customers call, call me up and say, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, the job site said your doors aren't working because I can still hear the sound coming through and it's supposed to be this STC. You get out to the field and there is a cutout or vent above the door in the wall. Um, those are things that it might sound a little funny, but 
they, you have to take all of that into consideration with acoustical doors. So it's not just the door and frame that has to um, have some sort of STC rating or properties to it. It has to be the wall and everything else around it. I like this slide because if you have someone that not quite sure of the STC rating that they, they're wanting, but if they can explain to you what it needs to do, you can kind of go through then and suggest an STC rating for them. This is a slide that I put in and I really like it because sometimes if you're like me, I get the U factor, R value, and like, okay, which one is which? Um, on both Seco and Curry's website, under the sustainability tab, they have this great chart that you'll see to the right there. It kind of walks you through. One, it also explains to you the difference between your U factor and your R value, um, which one's your heat transmission and the measure of the heat flow on your R value, but it will also tell you the various doors and the frames and what the R um, value is and the U factor. The one thing I do want you to be aware of is um, as you look at these different types of, of ratings, you'll see the various types of frames. Um, on an earlier session, we went through like the Mercury frame, the Kirk frame, and the standard frame. So be aware of that. And like I said, Seco and Curry's both have a, a, a abundance of information when it comes to these types of ratings and you're looking for that. The gauges of your doors, you're looking at from on doors from 20 to 12 gauge. Of course, on your 20 gauge door, light interior, um, commercial use, closet storage areas, 18 gauge is probably going to be, or it is your more common gauge on your hollow metal doors. Um, you'll see that a lot in a lot of specs, um, a lot of distributors, uh, our service centers, inventory, a lot of 18 gauge doors. Your 16 is gonna get into a little bit more heavy duty commercial schools, hospitals, um, retail spaces. 14 gauge will get into even more maximum duty. Maybe you have a higher um, security application that you're looking for. 12 gauge will be in your high security, whether it's bank area, vault areas, um, in police stations, in the, um, around the uh, cell area, those office settings there is where you're going to see a 12 gauge door. On the edges of the door, you will see that there's different types of seams and we'll kind of go through these with um, Curry's versus Seco. And the one thing you just wanna be aware of with Curry's doors, they have, and you'll see the detail at the top left there, they have a perimeter channel, both on the hinge and the lock side. So when their skins come together, as you see that it overlaps on that perimeter channel, their hinge cutout is actually embossed into that channel. And I'll show you on Seco how it differs a bit. But with Curry's, you have an S edge that is a visible seam on the edge of the door. The N edge is, again, it's manufactured where you have a visible seam, but we dress it. We weld it, spot weld it, and then we dress that edge so it has a seamless, it is a seamless door. The T is going to be your most expensive type of edge on the Curry's door because of the fact that it is a continuously full height weld on the edge of the door and then we dress that edge. Seco, as I was saying, you'll see here that the hinge is cut through the door, so it's a little bit different um, a way it's manufactured, but they also have a seamless center seam door that's also available. Um, with Seco's doors, they have what we call a pan and lid, and the lid actually is has a lip on it, and it, you'll see there in the detail, the pan actually has the slots, the lid will have um, the uh, 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 slips there that goes in, and they lock into place along with the um, adhesive. Different types of door edges we have out in the industry. Um, a couple of these we're going to go through that are the most common is going to be your bevel square and your square. The bevel square, the first word always refers to the lock side of your door. So the lock side of this will be beveled and basically it's slanted really about three degrees. Um, with that said, you'll see like the high side that sets up against the stop you have to have a handing on these doors. So any doors that have a bevel lock edge to it, we do need to know the handing of that door. Square edge doors came out in the industry probably 20, 
25 years ago, maybe about 20, 25 years ago. And basically with the square inch door, the hinge is cut through the door and it, we have a handing plate with this door. This allows this door to be handed in the field. So with that, when this door came out, a lot of distributors went to the square edge door. And again, it's going to depend on where you're located. Um, but that square edge door allowed them to cut their inventory in half because instead of um, offering 2070 rights and lefts, 3070 rights and lefts, they could just bring in 2070s, 3070 doors um, into their inventory and it can be handed in the field. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be for more of your standard hardware preps. You're getting into concealed type of hardware that you know we do need the handing for those. But again, those are gonna be your two most common types. You see more of your beveled, beveled, the beveled, which is beveled both sides on your wood doors, but we do offer them in, in metal doors. And again, your square and bull nose, again, you don't see that as much anymore because now we have hardware that will accommodate that door being a double acting type of door. The construction methods of how putting these doors together, I kind of went through that with the Seco and the Curry's doors, but here through SDI, SDI 134, you'll see that in our industry, we have a variety of different ways that the skins can be attached to each other. When we talk about the different types of steel for our doors, we have three different types. We have the CRS, which is classified, you'll see it as cold rolled steel. This steel does not have any zinc on it. Um, you see more of this type of cold rolled steel door. And again, it's going to depend on where you're located. But us here on the, on the West Coast, our exterior doors and frames, um, we do not use cold rolled material. Um, sometimes you'll, a lot of times you'll see any kind of application where there's a lot of moisture, humidity. They may not see, they may not specify uh, CRS steel. Uh, because there's no zinc, there's really nothing protecting that steel from just immediately starting to rust. So you'll see a lot of times it's interior on the cold rolled steel. Then you get into your galvanized and we, sometimes you'll hear it called like a spangled type of steel. That's the galvanized or G um, designation. The downside to this is that it is very difficult to weld. Um, primer, paint doesn't adhere to it very well. Um, and as you see, this is not recommended for doors and frame construction, but there are architects out there who swear by the, the galvanized material and they will spec it. So both Seco and Curry's offer the G90 um, steel for their doors. But again, please be very cautious of that. Um, the one that is standard for us, for Seco or Curry's is the A galvanized. Is a heat treated process. And basically the difference between, a uh, big difference between the galvanized and galvanils is how the zinc is applied. With the galvanil, you've got a heat process that we use an additional step. Um, paint and primer adheres very well to this, uh, can be welded a lot more easily, can be modified a lot easier than the galvanized material. And what we have as stock is the A galvanil material. The coating designations, um, A40, A60, G90, this refers to the amount of steel, uh, I'm sorry, the amount of zinc per square foot of material on both sides. So your A40 is four ounces, the A60 is six ounces, and of course G90 is going to be the nine ounce per square foot on both sides, um, total of both sides. Again, the A40, if you see it specified, both Seco and Curry only, Curry's only offer the A60, so you're getting more zinc on that steel. Um, and then you also, you have the G90. The other type of steel that we have out in industry is the stainless steel. Um, uh, of course, we all know that is quite expensive type of steel, but there are applications where you will need this type. If there's a lot of moisture, a lot of um, corrosive material that is around, you will see a stainless steel specified. Um, and then also sometimes you'll see it for aesthetics because it is a beautiful looking door. You'll have it in casino high end. Um, buildings may specify in their entry doors a stainless steel door. Um, you'll also see the different, the two different types of steel. You'll have the 304, the grades rather, and the 316. The 304 is probably your most common that you're going, going to see day in and day out. Your 316 is going to be on those highly corrosive applications. Um, you may hear it called marine grade. 
Um, the 316 basically has more chromium in it and it allows it to be more corrosive resistant than your 304. The different types of protective coatings on our hollow metal doors, our metal doors, your standard factory primer, that is what you're going to get if you don't specify anything. Um, on red oxide primer, you'll see there, and then your zinc rich primer. These are options that are available. There is an additional cost for that, but be aware of when you look at a spec, always just quickly glance on the, you know, are they asking for just the, the um, manufacturer standard primer or protection on this door, or are they asking for something different? And depending on where that door is going, the type of project, you may see them asking for the zinc rich and primer, which is really just going to help with um, uh, the rusting on that product. And then factory pre-finish. These, each factory has what they call their standard pre-finished colors that you can get in um, you know, four to six weeks, or you have custom pre-finished colors. And the one thing you wanna be aware of on factory pre-finish, if it's outside of their standard pre-finished, like Curry's has like 24, I believe, standard pre-finished colors, you get outside of that, we have a process that you have to go through. It has to, we have to match that color, send it back to you, you send it back to the GC or architect, they have to sign off on it and bring it back and then you send it to us. There is no engineering of the pro of the order, there is no um, cutting of steel until we get an approved color chip back. So again, that process could take weeks and weeks, so be aware of that. Um, then you, with the different cores, um, I wanted to, on these next few slides, we kind of talked about all the different cores that are out there in the industry. This now is going to drill it down based on Seco and the Curry's nomenclature. So at the bottom of the screen there, you'll see on a honeycomb core for um, uh, Regent is handed and the Omega is non-handed. And then Curry's, you have just a 707 and you have, you have to say it's a honeycomb core. With the honeycomb core, you'll see at the top there the gauges that are available. Um, and um, one thing you want to be aware of is not all of the cores are going to be offered in 16 or 14 to 20 gauge. You'll see here, this is offered from 16 to 20, but no 14 gauge. So be aware that not all of our cores are offered in all the different gauges. Um, you'll see the STC rating there. Um, the one thing I want you to be aware of is the R factor there. It says calculated core and operable. This is really important because not all manufacturers, our competition out there, can offer you all of these types of doors in an operable application. Um, basically, if it's calculated, we take that core and we test it out and we say, okay, this is the R factor for this chunk of the door. Operable is you need to hang that door, it needs to be operable, it needs to operate, and then what do you have as your calculated um, uh, information there. So be aware of that because your specs will call out for those two ASTMs. Um, with Seco and Curry's, we have both of those listed for you. Um, hourly rating up to a honeycomb core up to three hour. You'll see the benefits for a honeycomb core, and you'll also see the applications there. Um, for a honeycomb core. The polystyrene probably is your most common insulated core in the industry. And you'll see here um, the uh, gauges uh, that are available and it's available cold rolled A60 or G90. Again, it can be fire rated up to three hour, but note the STC is less than the honeycomb core. And these STC ratings are just the door itself. So if you took it off the shelf, you can test out at a 24. Of course, the STC is going to go up with seals and frames and all that kind of stuff, a, um, a complete package. Three hour fire rating, your benefits, competitive pricing, and it is an insulated core, and you'll see the applications, and below you'll see the Seco and Curry's nomenclature for the styrene core. Polyurethane core, that is your um, higher insulated value type of um, uh, core. You'll see the STC rating there, the gauges. Again, all of these cores can be fire rated at the three hour, but not all of them on the various, all the different sizes can be fire rated. So keep that in mind. And again, the benefits, you know, the, the best energy efficient type of core that we have in our industry um, and the, the applications there you'll see listed. 
the temperature rise door, the mineral fiber board core door, the 250 temp rise door, and you'll, you'll note here in just a minute why I point this out, but the 250 temp rise is a one piece core drop into the door. So with that, you have it available from 14 all the way down to 18 gauge. Give me fire rate of three hour. Again, stairwell chemical storage areas is where you will most likely see this product spec. Please don't miss this in a spec because these are quite a bit more expensive than your standard doors. When we get into the still stiffen door, again, these types of doors are built for um, uh, usage, abuse, use, high use areas, um, high frequency, severe traffic applications. Um, standard door is 22 gauge metal stiffeners in there, six inches apart, and then we pack it full of insulation. Um, you'll see down at the underneath the um, specs there, it says optional 450 temperature rise. If you have a spec that's calling for a 450 temp rise and not a 250, the door is going to be a still stiffened door. Therefore, you will have the um, you know, problem sometime with spot wall marks um, on the face of the door. So again, that's why I bring up the 250 is the best rating um, and it's a one piece core. So you don't have to worry about any kind of spot wall marks on the face of that door. The Trio E door, we have the Trio E and a Trio door. And you're like, okay, what is, what is the difference? If you remember E will, is standing for energy efficient. So the Trio E door, the way this door, and um, ASA is the only um, company in the, in, or as far as manufacturers seek on curries that offer this type of Trio E door. So again, the stiffeners are welded to a sub sheet. The stiffeners are cut back just a bit. And then we pump the door full of liquid polyurethane. So again, it becomes a highly energy efficient because you don't have that metal to metal. Um, and um, it is, like it says there, as far as the benefits, one of the lowest operable U factor in the industry with it being a still stiffened door. So again, this is a product that no one else, in the, no one else has. This is unique to Asa Abloy. Um, and again, you'll see the applications and then the Trio E or the Triple Seven E um, is a designation. The laminate still stiffen, which is just a trio door. The difference is, is that instead of pumping it full of liquid polyurethane, in between the stiffeners, we place it uh, with insulation. And again, if you have an application where they want a still stiffen door, they need it to be strong, that have that strength from a still stiffen, but they're going to paint it some high gloss finished paint you can offer them the trio or the triple seven door so they get the strength of the still stiffen along with not having to worry about any vertical uh, spot wall marks on the face of the door. Security doors. Um, these are doors you're going to see in high security as again institutional stairwells, toilet rooms, detention areas. Um, you will see these types of doors specified. Again, 14 to 16 gauge on these, they are still stiff and door, um, but they are doors that uh, we offer in either inch and three quarter thick. And at the bottom, you'll see the nomenclature or the product um, ID numbers on these and a two inch thick. So if you're getting into um, more of like a um, high security where you have bank vault areas, things like that is where you're probably going to be looking for the two inch thick door. But if standard security is what you're looking for, you can go with the inch and three quarter thick doors. Um, one thing I did want to mention to you on the two inch thick door, the way, another way that we beef this door up is that, you know, on your still stiffened doors, I, tell, I told you that the stiffeners are placed six inches apart. With these two inch thick doors, the way we accomplish that is that we put those stiffeners four inches apart. So the wider the door is, the more of the metal internal stiffeners you're going to get, which also helps beef up that door. We have another type of door, um, Seco through light and Curry's is 767. Uh, seven. These are your tubular style and rail doors. Uh, these are 16 gauge. Um, they, and if you look at the detail there to the right, it is a tubular construction. It is totally different than just a full glass type of door. You see these doors um, in exterior applications on schools, office settings. Uh, it is a very strong door. Again, 16 gauge, it can be galvanized. 
Again, we offer this in narrow styles and rails also, which can mimic a aluminum door, but you have the strength of this door being steel. Embossed doors we have, we have them in six, eight panels. We have the high def doors you'll see there to the right. Um, these are ADA compliant. They can be fire rated up to three hours. Again, with these doors, you have the strength of it being metal, but you have the, the beauty of it being a really nice design to it, a nice etchings on the skins. And again, the benefits there, um, again, another um, uh, alternative to a style and rail door. Plus you can get these doors three hour fire rated and an STC rating up to 48. Wood grain doors, I think this is probably my favorite doors of all the doors that we have, um, is the wood grain. This is an etched door. The, the skins are etched from our vendor, so they come into the factory already etched. And as you look at the picture there, you'll see that etchings go the correct direction, which will mimic a style and rail wood door. The beauty with our wood grain doors, and again, it's a Madeira for Seco and a curry stain for curries, is that these are metal. So if you're looking for strength, but you want it to have the look of wood, you can um, suggest these types of doors. They can be fire rated up to three hour. Um, what we do is we hand stain these. We have six standard colors, but we can match anything. And we can also paint the frames to match the door. Now the frames will not have etchings on it, but they will, but we can paint those to match the door. Um, and again, with these doors being three hour rated, um, once we hand stain these doors, we put a clear UV top coat on the doors to help protect this. Um, but we will not send these doors out to the field unstained. They have to be stained at the factory and then having that clear coat applied to them. But again, some really good, um, really good uh, alternative to a wood door, especially on exterior application where the wood door may not hold up as well. And then we have integrated door systems. Uh, we have the right door, and I'm not gonna spend a, a lot of time on this, but I wanted you to be aware that these, this type of door is out there. It's a great application um, for uh, having doors that sit back into a pocket, actually just kind of melt into the wall itself. Um, the exit device itself is embedded, um, um, low profile type of exit device is embedded into the um, door itself. We also supply it with um, some hardware. And again, applications for it, you'll see there, um, healthcare, educational, um, hospitality, and so on. But again, because of the unique feature and the way this door is made, it is a great application for those corridors. A lot of times you'll see it sitting next to an elevator. So in case of a fire, that door can close and protect that and people won't be able to use that elevator. But again, you'll see these in corridors, things like that also, other applications. Here is also showing you some different details, some uh, different um, projects uh, with the right door. And you may have walked past these and not even realize what it is. Again, because of the beauty of this, it can be laminated also, so it can mimic a wood door. And again, you'll see the detail at the bottom there, the low profile of that exit device that actually sits in to the door itself. A mercury door system is another system that we um, have available for um, your um, type of energy efficient. And you might say, well, why in the world would you have this along with the Trio E? Well, again, you may have a project that they are looking at cost. Uh, you have another option to offer them. It is the Mercury door system. We have a patent pending on this process. So not only do you have a thermal break frame, but you have the door to go along with it. And again, it's about 10% lower in um, compared to other energy efficient solutions. So keep that in mind with the mercury door and frame system that we do have available. Here is just giving you a little bit more details about the mercury door and the uniqueness of this. Um, the, the, some people may call it a still stiffen door and technically it's not. Um, technically what it is is the, we have these diamond shaped rods that we use from our sister company, Ameristar, who does the commercial grade fencing and gating and things like that. We, take, we have taken those diamond shaped rods and we weld it to the top and to the bottom of the door. And then we pump it full of liquid polyurethane. So again, it becomes a highly energy efficient type of, of product. And uh, we have a patent pending on this process. 
Door clearances, the one thing I want to always just I bring, I put the slide in here just to be aware of your undercut. That is so important. When you're looking at specific type of hardware, make sure that you know what your standard manufacturer's undercut is. Just within Asa Abloy, Curry's and Seco have two different undercuts. Curry's is 5 8 Seco is 3 quarter. So be aware of that undercut because it does play a part in your threshold or if you have automatic door bottoms or um, door bottoms that you need to set on the threshold, you need to make sure you've got enough clearance at the bottom. On the top and the size of the door, we will do those automatically as far as undersizing the door so it fits into that frame. Again, always give us the nominal size. If you're looking for a 36 inch wide door, give it to us as three foot. We undersize that for you. Here is showing you some of the various types of um, enclosures that are on our doors. With Seco and Curry's both, standard is going to be an inverted channel. So it'll be the, the two at the top on, on the right side. The top of the door has an inverted channel. So if you were using a door that was an outswing exterior application, there's no overhang on the door. You probably want to specify or to order that door with a flush top channel to it. Um, here in the Pacific Northwest, pretty much anything because of the little bit of rain that we get, we always want to have a top cap on those doors. Um, again, you can do it for the bottom, but that's not as it's not as common as seeing it at the top of the door. Along with putting a top cap on it, it can be screwed in, it can be welded in, it can be snapped in. And then also we can also offer, we also offer it to be sealed. So if you have an application where it's going to be a lot of moisture, a lot of water around, your architect may specify to seal the top and the bottom of the door, and we can do that. Again, this is just showing you some variations of the um, enclosures, um, curries, um, and then Seco. And again, remember that they can be snapped in, we can weld them in, they can be screwed in. Here again is some enclosures on the Seco side of it. And again, um, just showing you the, the details of the bottom and top channels. Some basic applications as far as single um, pairs, double wiggers, pockets, and sliding doors we'll go through here in just a little bit. This is not um, really hardware, but I just wanted to point out to you some of the hardware that the hardware that is standard as far as metal doors. So for instance, your full mortise, the, um, when you talk about full mortise, we cut into the door and into the frame. And if you're using templated hinges, that means that whole pattern will line up with the whole pattern, pattern on our uh, hinge reinforcements, whether it's door or frame. Your full surface or some you'll hear called continuous hinge, you'll see those a lot of times, um, a couple different applications. If they're um, uh, installing new doors, keeping the frames, uh, they have a hodgepodge of manufacturers. They may not want to go through and measure all of the openings. So you do a full surface or continuous hinge. Uh, you don't have to worry about going through and measuring everything. Sometimes you'll see these on elementary schools where the kids, if the door is open at 90, they can put their fingers through there. Somebody comes along, shuts the door or whatever. So they have these uh, full surface hinges that you will see um, on different types of school applications. With that on the hinges, um, the one thing with four and a half inch hinge preps, whether it's Seco or Curry's, that you could, it can, excuse me, it can accommodate either four and a half standard 0.134 or four and a half 0.180, which is your heavier weight hinge. So you don't have to specify heavy or standard on four and a half. However, you do need to specify that is it, um, on, when we start to talk about five inch hinges. Um, you'll see here the different types of way that each manufacturer accommodates either four and a half standard or heavy weight. And here is what Seco does with their handed or non-handed. Again, when it's non-handed, basically if you remember, it's, it's cutting through the skins of the door. And then there's some sort of handing plate that always is supplied with the door. And again, in our industry now, we are seeing more and more sliding types of, of, of doors out there. So you'll see those in hospitals, um, uh, residential, commercial office. Uh, you know, right now, swing doors take up a lot of real estate and a lot of the newer hotels 
uh, have the sliding doors for their bathroom, bedrooms, areas. So we offer these doors and we offer different types of hardware for that. So real quick, just going through some of the standard lock preps on our doors. You'll see here it's showing you for a cylindrical lock or a lever lock that we do install a, a lock reinforcement. So as that lock is being installed, you have some sort of reinforcement inside that door to accommodate either a, a knob lock or lever. We can also do it with through bolts. And the, dip, the detail to the far right is what I fondly call the squash turtle prep. What this does is on a lever lock with through bolts, it will accommodate the most standard lock manufacturers through bolt location. Um, but one thing you have to be careful of is that that, that detail or that, that um, uh, cutout in there, if you get your rows is not, if your rose is not big enough, you may have an issue with not being able to cover that um, squash turtle prep. And then for mortise locks on the doors, for mortise locks, we will always install a mortise lock box. On the edge of the door, we cut out about a one inch wide by eight inch cut out on the lock on the edge of the door. You can either order the door with, as a detail to the far left, with a, um, a sketchum where then when you put your mortise lock in the door, install it, and you put an escutcheon plate over that, we can do sectional trim, which is in the middle there, or which is most common for a lot of distributors to bring those doors in, what we call 86 edge or edge only. Face of the door is totally blank. It does have a mortise lock box in there. You can drill your cylinder hole either in the shop or in the field. Um, and here's uh, some additional types of lock, uh, lock preps that we can do at the factory or at the service center. Closers, the one thing I just want you to be aware of is that you have um, um, surfaced or concealed. If it's concealed, it is something that we can do at the factory, but again, your lead time is gonna go out and the cost goes up with anything that's concealed. If you remember always for that closure reinforcement box, Allow yourself six inches of clearance if you're going to mount any type of closer on that door or if you're having any kind of light cut out on the door. Always remember six inches you need to clear on that closure reinforcement. On exit devices, we have the rim, the surface, the concealed, and the mortise. All of these can be prepped on our doors. The rim, the only thing we're doing is putting in reinforcements on the hinge and the lock edge. The exit device actually is mounted to the face of the door. A mortise exit device, we will do a mortise lock box on the lock side and put a reinforcement on the hinge to mount that exit device. Surface vertical rods, again, we're going to put reinforcement on the hinge and lock and then also at the top and the bottom. So when you mount that surface vertical rod, the latches will have reinforcements inside the door. Concealed vertical rod is the only type of exit device um, um, of these four that um, has to come from the factory. Because what we're doing is we're be, we have to be able to house those rods inside the door. So we have to have a channel in there, we have to tab it out. So that's something that cannot be done um, at the service center or anything like that. So you do need to order directly from the factory when it's concealed vertical rods. And then we also have here about the securing the door. So we have the uh, pre-wired electrified type of hardware that we can also supply um, for you. A quick connect we talked about, well, kind of overlapped each other, I got to fix that. Um, lights and louvers, just as a quick note, again, just be aware that you're either giving us cutout size or visible glass size. Um, if you give us cut, uh, visible uh, cutout size, it usually with our light kits is two inches over that. Uh, I'm sorry, on the visible glass size is two inches over that for a cutout. And we have a lot of different types of glazing systems that are out there. Um, you'll find these in both Seco and Curry's price book and in their technical data. And then the one thing is on your trim for metal doors. A lot of it, if it's just surface applied, it's not a big deal. But when you start looking at um, different types of trim hardware, that's either gonna be mortised up into the door like an automatic or mortised door bottom, just be aware of the amount of um, clearance at the bottom that is required for those doors. 
And then this is our last slide is the industry organization. Some of you are probably very familiar with a lot of these, but we always like to um, make sure that you're aware of them. The Still Door Institute SDI um, is the, to me, one of the most important that I use more than any of the other organizations listed there because that's where us as hollow metal manufacturers have to comply with the different standards. And that comes out of SDI and you'll see architects spec you know, he has to be a member in good standing of, of Steel Door Institute. Um, so we drive a lot of our standards from the SDI. And the other one is the NFPA 80 for your National Fire Protection Agents Association. For instance, in NFPA 80, it states that on a door, fire rated door, you can drill up to a one inch diameter hole uh, in the field on that fire rated door. Anything other than that, has to be done at the factory or taken back to the distributor's office or a service center and, and modified. So again, these are very good industry organizations that you want to be aware of. So with that said, I, I kind of speed it up a little bit towards the end because I wanted to make sure we had enough time to answer any questions that you may have. And Chad, I don't know if you have any um, that are outstanding. Rose, um, I have three for you. Okay. The first one is, could you recommend an STC rating, specific rating, for a hollow metal door for a toilet room that has a break room adjacent? Um, yes, um, let's see if I can get back here real quick to the, and again, I always say you don't have to know everything, you just need to know where to find the information. So with that, I would refer back to this slide here. Um, if they're looking for, um, what is it, a bathroom that has like a break room on the other side, is that what it is? Yes, yes. So you, you don't need it to be so, um, such a high STC that, no, you know, uh, no noise is going through because the higher the STC, then it's going to, you get into a cost and you get into different types of um, hardware and um, applications for that. So what I usually say is you stay anywhere under 45 down or maybe even 40 down, you should be fine on those types of app, on that type of application. Again, it's going to depend on the seals that are, are that you have on there and the type of door. Um, so anything over say 45, you're going to get into more commercial type where they really don't want hardly any noise coming through. And in that application with the, the bathroom against a um, uh, lunchroom or eating area or whatever. You just don't want a lot of noise, but it doesn't need to be up into the 50 or high 40s. Again, it's going to be cost. The other thing I do want to mention with this is anything that's under like 50, um, you can use standard hollow metal frames and you have your sound seals and everything else with that. When you get over that, you have to go to a more beefed up um, type of frame that is not something that is inventory. So again, that lead time goes off, goes out and the cost goes up. So keep that in mind also. So I hope okay. that answered the question. Yeah, thank you for that. I have another one here. Due to the weight of the Trio E door, mm -hmm. do you guys always recommend that with the heavy duty hinges? Um, with the Trio E, um, you do have with the stiffeners in there. Um, I have seen it with four and a half inch heavyweight, um, but you know, if depending on where it's being used, it may be a good option to go to five inch on that. Um, again, it's going to depend on the application. Um, one thing I did want to point out, and it just made me think when you're talking about the hinges on that, is on the STC, please be aware if it's over 50, we have to have it with cam lift hinges. Again, that is a type of hinge where because the weight of that door, it will actually open and it sets down on the threshold. Um, so be aware of that. But in that other question there, it really is just going to depend on the application. On those cam hinges, is that going to be 50 and over or just over 50? Um, we start at 50 and over. Okay, 50, 50 and over, you get the cam lift. And over. Right. The other thing too, if you ever need this, um, is that we, we don't have it on the website yet, um, but we're, we're working towards that. On STC, we have some incredible eight and a half by seven, um, eight and a half by 11 
excuse me, PDF cut sheets that goes through all of the STCs. It has the type of door, the type of frame, because not all frames are going to be a standard profile frame. Some are going to be cased opening with applied stop. Some are going to be split frame. So we have these sheets that goes through and it tells you based on the STC, <coughs> excuse me, what is involved in that particular opening. If you need that, please reach out to your um, local DSS office. They can get that or you can reach out to me and I can send you a full set of those for STC. But it is something that's a really good resource. One last question. Could you please explain again why having six inches clear at the top of the door is important for a closer reinforcement? Yes. Um, let me get to that real quick. It's, for me, it's easier if you see it. Ah. Um, at the top of the door here, and we can see it right here. At the top of the door, we have that closer reinforcement box. And if you look real close, it's just a U channel that's welded then to the top cap of the, that inverted channel. And when we drop it inside the door and then we weld that channel, this becomes like a one piece. And this is drops down about, Seacon Curry's has the dimensions a little, bit diff, a little bit different, but if you always remember six inches will clear that box in there, that closure reinforcement box. So that's why if you did a light cutout in this door, you always want to make sure looking at that light cutout what, where do they want you to place that light cut out? Is it seven inches down? Is it eight? Or if it's three inches, then you're going to have an issue with that closer reinforcement um, in that door because it will interfere with that. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. I believe that's all the questions. Let me make sure here, go through one more time. Okay. And again, as Chad is looking there, yep. I just want to, okay, great. I'm sorry, go ahead. I no. got one here, okay. a question about lead line doors. Okay, I'll see if I can answer that one. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, do, do we offer them? And of course yes. the answer is yes. Yes, we do. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a specialty um, uh, presentation tomorrow on, on, on these types of doors. But yes, we offer a lead line. We offer all the way up, the, the uh, literature says, I think it's up to a quarter inch thick lead, um, but we have done one inch thick lead line jobs before. So um, we can put the lead in the frame and in the doors. Uh, we can offer those to you. So yes, they are available. Um, I would always suggest that on lead line products that you have our specialty department to give you pricing on those. Yes, I wanna remind everybody that we can also lead line the covers for uh, exit devices and door closers mm -hmm. and the escutcheons and the things for locks. So there's absolutely no way um, any of those, that radiation can come through. The absolutely. We, we supply the complete opening with those with lead line. So um, if there's no other questions, um, I just want to say thank you all so very much for attending this session. Hopefully it has been very uh, beneficial to you. And uh, stay safe out there and have a great day.